Hello, this video tutorial will provide you with a walkthrough of the SoundSeed Impact Modeler. If you haven't already done so, you should watch the SoundSeed Impact Overview video first as it explains some of the core concepts and benefits of using SoundSeed Impact. It also explains how the modeler application fits into the overall SoundSeed Impact workflow. The SoundSeed Impact Modeler is a standalone application that is used offline to extract resonance information from a sound. By extracting the resonance portion of a sound and saving it as a series of parameter values, you can generate an infinite number of sounds in your game from only one sound. Let's take a closer look at the modeler and see how it fits into the SoundSeed Impact workflow. When you load a source audio file into the modeler, a spectral analysis is performed that detects the resonance modes within the source audio file. When an appropriate model has been created, the frequencies, bandwidths, and magnitudes of these resonance modes are stored as a model data file. At the end, you are left with two files, a residual wave file, which is essentially the source file with all resonant content removed, and the model data file, that contains modeled resonant mode information. These two files that are generated by the modeler are then imported into WISE where the resonance model data can be transformed. The transformed resonance data is applied on the residual file at runtime to create variations of the original sound. Now that you have a basic understanding of what the modeler should be used for, Let's take a look at the different areas of the modeler's interface. The left side of the SoundSeed Impact Modeler consists of three main tabs, the Input tab, Residual tab, and the Resynthesis tab. You will notice that all three tabs contain a waveform and spectrogram of the corresponding signal, as well as a series of controls that allow you to audition the various components of the sound. The input tab displays information pertaining to the original source audio file that will be modeled. On the right side of the modeler, we see the analysis tab. Here we control the way the modeler detects and filters detected modes of resonance. This data model file will later be saved and used at runtime by the SoundSeed Impact plugin in WISE. These detected modes are then removed from the original input file, creating a noise-only residual file, as displayed using the Residual tab. Here you can see that the resonance has been removed, leaving only the noise. This residual file will later be saved and used at runtime by the SoundSeed Impact plugin in WISE. Now, a quick way to validate the current model is to have the modeler synthesize the playback by applying the data model to the residual file. This can be performed by using the ID Synthesis button. Comparing it to the input file will confirm that you are on the right track to creating a useful model. Finally, the Synthesis tab allows you to create synthesis transformations, providing unlimited playback variations. These can be auditioned using the Transformations button. This provides you with the same transformation functionality provided by the real-time SoundSeed Impact plugin in WISE. So, let's now take a closer look at the SoundSeed Impact Modeler and walk through the creation of actual models. The sound made when hitting a wine glass falls into the category of highly resonant sounds. Given the pure tones of this particular resonance, this sound is probably the most ideal and easy to model. The modes of resonance clearly appear in the input sound spectrogram. Let's listen to the input sound. By looking at the spectrogram, we can see content up to 16 kHz. So, our sample rate of 32 kHz is fine. Switching to the residual tab, we can see that the modeler has done a pretty good job of detecting and removing modes using its default settings. By looking at the residual spectrogram, 
we can see that modes of resonance have not been detected and removed. Currently, there are six detected modes. So, let's increase the resolution parameter to 100. You can now see that many more modes have been detected, from 6 to 84, properly removing the resonant modes. Let's audition both the input and residual sounds once again. Now, if we look at the analysis display, we can see that some higher frequency modes have not been detected. So, let's decrease the minimum mode distance to allow these close modes to be modeled. Our detected and modeled curves now appear much closer. Again, let's audition both the input and residual sounds once again. As a model optimization, I will now discard all of the detected modes below 15 dB. This filtering is done by using the peak threshold. Note that our model currently contains 34 modes. This will eliminate many of the low amplitude modes, leaving only modes that will contribute to synthesis. This filtering has left us with 14 modeled modes. Comparing the input and residual sounds reveal a very good residual sound. Filtering is a critical step in the modeler, as the runtime performance in WISE is determined by the number of modes in the model. Comparisons now between the input and ID synthesis reveals non-perceivable differences, meaning our resynthesis model is appropriate. This can also be confirmed by toggling through the input and resynthesis tabs. As a final optimization, we will truncate the residual file. By looking at the residual spectrogram, we can see that there is no audio content after approximately 200 milliseconds, as compared to the input file, which has content up to almost 3,000 milliseconds. This allows the residual wave file to be truncated simply by dragging the red trim cursor at the desired position, resulting in a smaller residual wave file. Remember that this residual file will be used by WISE at runtime, resulting in a substantial memory savings as compared to the original input file. Finally, the Synthesis tab allows for transformations to be applied. This gives you a precise idea how your model will sound in WISE using the SoundSeed Impact plugin. Now the residual and model file can be saved from the modeler. The plastic bottle falls into the category of sounds that don't contain much resonance. Creating a useful model provides unique challenges. Looking at the input tab, we can see that our source file has a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Let's set the modeler sample rate to 48 kilohertz to validate that we are in range. We can see some audio content in the range of 20 kilohertz, so we can set the modeler sample rate to 40 kilohertz. Listening to the input sound, we can hear slight variations in the low frequency resonant content as the plastic bottle makes contact. Let's listen to the input sound. We want to focus our model on the low frequency content, so we will start filtering the model. For this, we will slide the red cursor in the analysis display to set the maximum mode frequency to a value of approximately 1 kHz. Given that only one mode has been preserved, we can now reduce the minimum mode distance to 50. 
This will now create five detected modes. By comparing the input and residual sounds, we can hear that the low frequency resonance has been removed in the resulting residual sound. Comparisons now between the input and ID synthesis reveals non-perceivable differences, meaning our resynthesis model is appropriate. This can also be confirmed by toggling through the input and resynthesis tabs. Finally, the Synthesis tab allows for transformations to be applied. This gives you a precise idea how your model will sound in WISE using the SoundSeed Impact plugin. Now the residual and model file can be saved from the modeler. That's it. You are now ready to create your own SoundSeed Impact models. For further information about creating resonance models, refer to the SoundSeed Impact Modeler Help.